One of the reasons why I think Hammerhead is so important from an iOS perspective is simply as a file player. Because what it gives you is a very sort of low impact um, in terms of the effect upon your CPU, a very low impact option to loop eight channels or to, to trigger eight channels. And because it is so low impact, you can then do two instances of a hammerhead to get 16 channels, four to get 32, you know, obviously. I'm sure you can all do the maths. And the, the reason why that is so powerful is because there are a lot of apps which don't have multiple outputs that you can then kind of bypass and, and give that functionality to. Now, if you've watched other videos on my channel, you may have seen where I utilize hard panning to get two channels out of Koala. So I'll get the stereo output and create two mono channels from it. Now I might hard pan the drums left and everything else right. Then when I load that into AUM, I can have one mono channel with drums on and one mono channel that has everything else on that I can then side chain which gives you quite a lot of power. But it will be better if you had multiple outputs. And I know that's something Marek is working on, but in the meantime, you can basically do the same thing. It's like an upgrade of using the file player that's embedded within AUM. So just to give you an example. So this is a track that I made on the Flip Roulette this past weekend uh, on Koala Beatcast. And if you're into Koala, I definitely recommend you checking that out. So this was the this was the track basically as it kind of came out. So just a, a quick little example. So that's a few loops. That's the kind of the bulk of the track. The way that I actually use it is. I'll then create one long file um, and then do the sort of various ins and outs on there. But what you can do if you have the ability to load each element in a different file player is you can then apply effects per channel. So I've taken the different elements. You can hear all the different elements of the track. And I'm going to export those as loops. And they're obviously all four bars, so I can load in four bar loops. Now, I've, just to save time, I've already done some of them. So I'll just do this last one, which is the drums. And the way I would do that, if you're not familiar, is you go to export, do the current sequence. You want it mixed because you just want everything in there. Uh, and I've called this track, this track, Pelog 83, um, because it uses the wonderful Pelog scale. And I'll just call that Beats. Now I'm going to save that to Files. And in Audio Share, I've already got Roulette Renders folder. So that puts that in there. That's everything that I need from Koala now. So as you can see, these are all the different elements that I built the track from. And if I, if I want to, I can obviously come back and, and extract more sounds if I want to do that. And as I've said, I could load that in a different instance of Hammerhead. But for starters, we've got eight there. I'm going to come back over to AUM now just to show you what we're working with. So this is a blank, completely blank Hammerhead set. I put it at 83 beats per minute, which is what the Koala setup was. So that's all good enough for that now. And then if we were going to load in a sound, so I'm going to come to user samples, do sample import, come down to where I've created that so I called it Koala HH Roulette Renders and I'm going to put so let's go for these melodic sounds first and I'll populate those now I can obviously change the name of that I'll just call it Mel1 then do the same for the next one so we'll have this one as Mel2 and then Mel3 Going to populate all of these. Now, obviously, what that gives me at the moment is it just gives me these tracks in there. So if I want them to play, they're four bars long. Obviously, I need to make sure that I put that down. So change the duration to four bars of each of these. Now, that gives me the ability to, to go into these. And there we go. They're all going to start at the same time.
You can hear those three there. And obviously they're only going to play the first bar. So that's those there. Now, if I want to, obviously, I can have that so it plays through across all four. If I want to do the sequence, the lovely thing about the way that it works with the start point on the second channel, on the second um, pattern, I can do exactly the same thing. But on the start point, I'm going to move it along. So I've got those two there. Move it up there. And move it up there. So then when it comes through, if I do sequence, So then we can do, obviously, we can do the same with the third one. And we'll do that one by one. So the start point, one, three, four. Oops, chunky fingers. for the fourth one and obviously the start point of that is six of the eight oops there we go so then if I do the sequence and start at one So that's those broken out to separate bars. So obviously now I have more control so I can just play each individual sequence if I want different moments. Now obviously I need to populate the rest of these. So I'm going to go in here on the next one. I'm going to go for, uh, let's try the bass. I'll rename that there. Make sure I put it on four bars. And the next one, I'll do the chords. Title it, whoops. Cool new way of spelling chords. Then we'll have the echo first instance. So I'll call it echo one, four bars, and then we'll have the second instance. And then we'll call that echo two. And again, that's four bars. I didn't didn't accept that one. So then we just need to add the beats in. Got all those on at four bars, so that's great. And then I just need to add the last one, which is the beats. So four bars for that. And we'll just retitle that one beats. So now obviously I'm gonna to need to populate those on each of the channels. So if I go back to the bass. Now, if you want to, if you don't want as much control, because we've already got something in all of these, it'll play all of those through. So if I just hit the first one of all of these, I don't really want Echo 1 and 2 playing at the same time, so I'll turn Echo 2 off. So here we go. Now that's obviously just coming through the master channel. If I want to create individual instances, I'm going to create a new track, multibus audio instance, and then each of these, I'm going to duplicate those across. Obviously, I'm going to want to rename them. Now, I don't want them both playing, so I won't want this to output at the same time. It, because it does it on a per track basis, so channel one has come out, that one's channel two, and all the way across, I'm just going to want to duplicate all of these. And then we've got plenty of uh, that one went a bit rogue. So let's just double check that one. 
that one's five. So then we want to duplicate this one, duplicate that one. Then we've got one left. Now, obviously, we might want to retitle those, but for now, we can just need to sell on myself as well. Otherwise, you'll be able to hear the mic. So we're going to want to retitle these. Obviously, these are all the melody ones. So as we've gone through, you can press on any of these and you can see what they are. So one, two, three, and then bass. So we're going to want to rename these. So now we should have those three that we renamed, they should all be melodies. Excellent. So I can unsolo those. So what's next? Should be the bass. Excellent. And then we've got the next one, which I believe was the chords. Yeah. This one should be the first echo. Yeah. And this one's the second echo. And finally, the beats. Okay, now what I always find is good practice. So what we did on these ones here, you can see that we split them up. I'm gonna to wanna to do those on all of these as well, because otherwise you've not got the same control over each of the steps. And that's pretty important for the way that I wanna do things. So, because I've got four sounds, obviously, I'm coming all the way up there. So it's in blocks of two. So there are obviously there's eight different start points and I wanna go through uh, and make it all on each one. So that's, should be the melodies and the bass all done. We'll do the same with the chords. So straight over to number two. It's gonna start on the first one, two in, number three, Four in, number four, six in. Same with echo. So you can see it's not exactly a time consuming process. Back to number one, that's already in. Number two, two in. And then number four, six in. Same with echo, just quite methodical. So now I'm going to turn them all on at the same time and I'm going to control whether they play or not with the ohm faders. So bear that in mind. So the, there's going to be sounds here that will effectively clash. It would like to sound clash though. Just turn that one on. So just double check that I've done that across the board. Excellent. Now, anyone that I, if I pick it manual now, any one of them should play through. Obviously, that's the drums that are soloed. Now, I've broken them out into doing individual tracks because I want to add processing. Obviously, I'm going to put degrader on the drums, for example.
That's got them banging quite nicely. So if I bring everything back in. I've just soloed the mic. Now, obviously, that's just going to loop through the first one. So if I turn it back onto sequence, go back to the start. I can start dropping channels out. So if I want to start it subtly, then I could just do one melody at a time, perhaps. Just a really, really simple, obviously that's not sequenced very well, but just a really simple example of the power that we have now. We can, obviously we can affect absolutely everything. So if I want to put, uh, if I wanted to put a filter, for example, on the bass, then I can just go into that, grab a filter. Uh, in fact, let's go for this one. Keep forgetting the not solo the track and solo myself. So if we go for that one on the bass. So that's got loads of processing potential just by dropping that in there. And obviously if I bring just the beats and the bass back. So. There's loads of potential there, but basically all of the multi-out options that you wanted from Koala, you can all now get just by dumping them into Hammerhead and chopping them up. And obviously there's loads of other potential that we can go into in future videos. I'll look at how you could take Melody um, and you can use the channel config to, for example, change the Melody so that you get polymeters uh, if you have less steps. So just to mute that, I'll just unsolo everything. So I'll bring both of them up there, in fact, so if I go to the mixer, I'll unmute. We've got two melodic elements there, and I'll keep it on manual, so for this one here. See, that's modified all of them, but what I can do is just put this channel and bring that down to 12, for example. So if you can hear the polymeter that we have, this channel here, the third melodic, that's still playing the same speed, uh, the same amount of steps, so that's playing all four beats in the bar, but the first one's only playing three. So 
So it's, it's moving from, it opens up an awful lot of different time and possibilities. But like I said, we'll look at those in future videos. Hopefully this has been useful and you can see the potential for Hammerhead, even if you're not looking for a drum sampler, how effective it is as a, a file player and as a looper to allow you to sequence and add individual track effects to, for example, Koala. Thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy Hammerhead.